Models are expensive, but maybe there's a way to fix that. Mini painting, hobbying, building little toy gizmos and doodads, it's not a cheap experience and can get extremely expensive. But maybe there's a way you can get someone into the hobby for cheap to explain the concepts of them. Maybe there's a simulator. Well, there is. It's called Model Builder. For some of us, having a dedicated hobby space is impossible. For example, I do all my work at this desk. Model Builder then turns that into a bit of a game. It gamifies the entire process with a beautiful hobby space. So. The model builder game works like this. It opens with a campaign on the pretense of a dead grandfather leaving behind an amazing hobby space. The game walks you through every aspect of the model building and painting process, and then it builds on those core mechanics of making models by presenting challenges and competitions that you can partake in. With the campaign, there is a linear level of progression in model complexity, but generally speaking, you can do one model, you can do them all. They don't really get more complicated they just get more parts. Now, if you're a simulator gamer, you might be asking how detailed is this? Well, compared to other simulators, Model Builder is more of a loose interpretation of the craft that uses a lot of the vocabulary. It is nowhere near as complex as, say, Microsoft Flight Sim or Arma or anything of the like. So, what is this game and who's it for and how can it help you in your hobby? As a game, Model Builder meets all of the requirements of a simulator. The menus are very utilitarian and it's generally not intrusive. The space you play in builds on this zen-like quality of doing a task repeatedly and it's very calm and quiet. It has all the features you would need to get started. Model Builder isn't super complicated though. This is a double-edged sword. Mechanically, this game is simple. It can actually be played with one hand which is kind of a good thing, but we'll get back to that later. Oh, and if you like content about hobbying, miniatures, D&D, all the fun nerd stuff, make sure to subscribe to MPT. Functionally, if you jump right into the sandbox, you'll have this huge list of historical models and some fantasy models, and you can literally cut open all these boxes and just get out to cutting the sprue and having a fun time. Uh, it's complete with a full color step-by-step -step instructions that you can use to build the model and then end up being proud of it at the end. Full color instructions is amazing and I wish more things had full color instructions. The game is separated into two fully fleshed out stages, really, the building portion and the painting portion. Building is the weaker aspect of the game. Obviously, you follow the instructions and you have a few guides to help you out. There really isn't much to do here where building a model in real life can take uh, kind of like a lot of mental energy. Uh, here, building a model kind of feels like a means to an end. Uh, buildings also like highlight an issue with the instructions. Uh, the instructions on the model would have you bouncing back and forth and you know, so you'll cut something and then you'll go to paint that thing that you just cut but this kind of adds extra fluff and time. You have a lot of assistance tools and you really don't need to do that. The computer keeps track of all the parts for you, which is something that can be really cumbersome if you cut everything off the sprue in real life. Really, building kind of happens at a super fast speed in this game because of all the assistance tools, and I think you can turn some of them off. Obviously, this works the same way as in real life, where if you cut everything off up front and you know what you're building, it's going to be like a really fast build. But for example, a nightly tank build that you're doing for the first time might take an entire night, but then here, it's more like a 30 minute sprint that you get through really quickly. Really, the building portion isn't the exciting part of this game. The painting is really the core part of this experience. You can, of course, follow the instructions, but those things aren't really required in the sandbox. You have paint buckets, brush tools, dry brushing, washing, airbrushing, stamps, tons of tools at your disposal. The bucket tool can paint a whole piece with a base coat, or this can be divided into sections to paint sections with a base coat. Basically, you're gonna end up with a perfect base coat and you can choose from a variety of colors. The brush tools are more engaged though. The paintbrush works more like a stamp would in real life. It allows you to put down a line of paint with a really hard edge. The airbrush does a similar thing, but it lacks those hard edges. It has a very uh, gradient-like structure to the brush. Uh, the airbrush also gets much smaller than the paintbrush, so it's for very precise coloring. The airbrush is absolutely astounding in this game and it 
definitely stands out as a really good feature. At first I thought it was just that complex, but the painting system really flexes its muscles by allowing you to do highlights and recess shadows with a dry brush and wash. It doesn't work the way you'd expect it to in real life, it's very particular about the crevices and hard edges, but this really goes the extra mile to making the paneling on say a tank stand out. The painting process can really be as simple or as complex as you want, but you don't have to rely with the in-game grading system to really reach what you want. It's also grading art, so it's kind of hard to, you know, reach that end, but generally if you follow all the instructions, you're going to end up getting five-star models left and right. I can't praise the painting system enough. It's definitely worth the price of entry, and it uses real paints. Sound-wise, though, the game is nothing special. The soundtrack this game has is, it kind of drives me nuts. Uh, I think the tracks come from like an audio library because I feel like I've heard these in YouTube videos before. It, it keeps having me like fire off neurons in relation to like Minecraft Let's Play or some guy reviewing a thing for multiple hours on end in a video essay. The sound design is a little better than the soundtrack though. It's uh, nice snipping sounds and building sounds and painting and it all sounds really nice with not sounding obnoxious. Uh, the sound design is kind of like Power Wash Simulator in that, it, you know, the constant white noise just has a really good feel when you're getting into it. The biggest downside of this game is really the lack of workshop or mod support. Even if you owned all the DLC, I'd imagine that if you go as fast as I do, you can get through pretty much everything in the game in about 24 hours, give or take. Uh, the models you do build can actually have real world parallels. So if you like historicals, you can definitely test out a paint job here or test out different ideas here in Model Builder before you go and commit to it in real life, which I think is a really good tool. They also partnered with other hobby companies. So in some cases, you literally do have direct parity. So AK Interactive is uh, contributing their paint scheme, Titan Forge miniatures, and uh, there's also Witcher and Cyberpunk stuff, and uh, these things aren't real, there's no physical equivalents of these, but there really should be, and if there are physical equivalents, I need to go buy them now because they look great. Overall, Model Builder is a great gateway to the hobby, it's a great alternative to going out and buying a bunch of equipment. You'll get familiar with terms, tools, and models for a fraction of the cost of the real thing. The real win for Model Builder is that, you know, it has a lot of accessibility, and I think that's been pretty apparent throughout this review. The price alone is a huge one here, it's significantly cheaper, which makes sense, but uh, there's plenty of older people in the hobby who may want to continue doing the hobby, but may lack the hand dexterity when it comes to some more complex and tiny models. Uh, maybe this is a way to facilitate that. Your mileage may vary, of course, but if it's a thing that keeps you hobbying and your brain moving, that's pretty much all you need. An interesting Steam review I also read about this was about a Ukrainian gamer who was hunkered down in Kiev, sitting in the metro gaming and model builder, because for obvious reasons his hobby store was closed, which really just goes to show the potential in this system for digital hobbying. In the future, I think maybe a VR function would be great for this system. It might be a little clunky, uh, the models get really blown up when you're looking at them on a screen. I'd recommend model builder with the caveat being that if you got a ridiculous pile of shame, maybe don't divide your attention between this and that pile, but Overall, I think this is a really great and accessible way to get people into the hobby that may be a little bit expensive for some people. If they enjoy the process here, this might be their chance to go turn around, hit up a hobby store, and pick up exactly what they need. And now that they've been doing it in Model Builder, they know what they're looking for. Anyway, if you do check out Model Builder, uh, 
they, please tell me. I'd love to know. It's a really fun game. Now, if you like this review of Model Builder, perhaps you'll like our review of certain paints, or you'll be interested in our upcoming Minimalist DM kit. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell. See you guys next time.